Hello friends, welcome to Dr. Sai Physiology Academy, DOPA for short. This is the place where we make the learning of physiology easy, exciting and effective. Thank you for joining me. And if you're new to this channel, you're especially welcome. And if you love the content that we share, can you click the like button and also the subscribe button. And don't forget to turn on notifications so I don't get to miss any new content that we share. All right, let's get started. So in today's lecture, we're going to be dealing with two different things, ligand receptor interactions and types of cell signaling. Remind the part one, we ended by saying that an understanding of this interaction will help us appreciate why those that have diabetes, diabetes mellitus, that when they urinate sugar and to gather it because there's glucose sugar in it. We're gonna understand that. So let's look at ligand receptor interactions. He's just trying to talk about some of the characteristics that occur between the relationship of the chemical messenger, when ligand is chemical messenger, and then the receptor. Now, one of them, we're going to be talking about four different things. Saturation is one of them. Another one is affinity. Another one is specificity. And another one is competition competition all right let's start with the first one what do you mean by saturation now when in the cell membrane like this let's say this is the cell membrane a ligand is supposed to bind to receptors especially for the plasma membrane kinds of receptors okay these are receptors all over here what saturation is telling you is that there is a limited number of receptors that exist on the plasma membrane at any given point in time so it's limited now look at this let's assume that in this cell you have just 500 receptors for a particular ligand okay you have 500 receptors and then you now have 500 molecules of the ligand coming to come and bind to elicit a response so what happens is that those 500 will occupy every single space then if you now have more ligands of for that receptor coming what do you think will happen there is no space again all the spaces are occupied that is what saturation is talking about and how does it relate to someone that has diabetes now listen when glucose you know when there is filtration in the kidney i want you to appreciate this thing we are talking about not just uh, theoretical stuff when in the kidneys eh, there's there's filtration from the blood that's how urine is formed first of all there's filtration then things that are still needed in the body like glucose they are now reabsorbed back into the blood that process of reabsorption transportation is through bind it binds okay it binds to the receptors in the cell membrane so but when there is something like diabetes there's a lot of glucose that the amount of glucose is far more than what is available for binding so the excess will now be excreted in the urine that's what happens so the same thing when you relate it to cell signaling there is a maximum amount of response that a cell can have so even if you are continue uh, keep pump you keep pumping in ligands more and more it will not increase the response but before it is saturated the more the ligand the more the response the more the like but when it's saturated even if you keep bringing more light so it exhibits this saturation kinetic ligand receptor interaction now the next one is affinity affinity has to do with the ease the love the ligand has for the receptor the ease and whenever you're talking about affinity generally everything has to do with energy I want you to understand energy from this perspective it has to do with attraction 
affinity has to do with attraction a boy loves a girl he has affinity or he's attracted to okay just like a magnetic force so that's what affinity is it's an energy relationship so when there's affinity it means that you need smaller number or amount of ligand to elicit a certain level of response if the affinity is slow you will need more of that ligand to bring about the same level of response because we're talking about physiological responses so this thing relates to how drugs work there are some drugs for example there's a drug called diazepam that you take when you want to sleep you sleep when you take diazepam that drug the effective dose is usually 10 to 20 milligram okay but something like paracetamol pcm for an adult how many you take two tablets and each of those tablets 500 500 that's 1000 gram 1000 milligram sorry which is one gram okay you see the vast difference this is the amount the dose that will bring about the response which is to reduce your pain and whatever you take or fever whatever you're taking it for you see the difference it has to do with affinity that means this drug has more affinity for its receptors you know drugs are chemicals they are chemical medicine and they are ligands too right so that's that's that then specificity has to do with how exact a receptor is to the ligand okay it's if a ligand is coming that is does not match exactly the receptor nothing will work even if it resembles it a little but it does not exactly fit into it so that's the specificity that's easy to understand now what about competition competition has to do with the fact that you know the body has its own ligands okay chemical messengers but the, you can also have foreign chemicals like drugs drugs that have similarities with the ligands that are inside the body they will go and be competing with the natural ligands for binding at that receptor site okay that's what competition is talking about and sometimes those drugs can come and bind and prevent the natural ones from having the response if the natural one the response is supposed to to increase pain and then the foreign ligands come and bind to it and yet the, that foreign ligand is not doing any work what do you think it will do it will inhibit that pain causing attribute of that ligand that will help to reduce pain some they, they work like that sometimes it could have the same effect so you can have inhibition you can also have what they call agonist so it could be antagonist that's when it is opposing the natural effect of the natural ligand antagonist then if it's promoting the effect it is called an agonist okay so competition they compete with the natural one so you could inhibit it antagonize it or you could promote it agonist all right so next we're going to be looking at types of cell signaling they are drawn here we're going to be looking at that don't go anywhere after this break right you're welcome back now let's talk about types of cell signaling very quickly now look at these diagrams there are actually five and it has to do with depending on the distance okay between the signaling cell and the target cell now if you look at this this one is the signaling cell all these three here this one they are all target cells so let me introduce you to an acronym that will help you to remember them okay jane jane is someone's name jane p okay so now 
let's start with this with the J and it is represented by this second diagram here it is called number one juxta cream juxta cream signaling so what does does juxta cream signaling mean juxta cream it means that the signaling cell is joined together very close they are, they are touching themselves and the target cell you see how close they are their cell membrane is even touching themselves so the ligand goes into the target cell directly okay look at it there are these things are gap junctions gap junctions okay so it's just talking about the fact that juxta cream juxta very close next to it very close to it so there's no wahala at all from between the ligand and the receptor on the next cell so they, there's direct connection so it can easily just influence the next target cell that it wants to influence that's juxta cream very easy then number two a stands for autocrine autocrine signaling it's represented by this first one you see that it does not have two cells represent only one it means that the same cell that is signaling is also the same cell that is receiving so target cell signaling cell is one so what happens is that this cell secretes the ligand it comes out enters this space here which is the interstitial fluid okay which is the internal environment it enters and goes back diffuses and comes and acts on the same cell you see the arrow so it's acting on itself so that's autocrine sometimes the cell will release its ligand without even coming out into this space with if it doesn't come out and it induces it it's it's now known as intra crime intra no anything auto means self but this one is not even coming out to even inflame it's just with still within the cell itself that one is called intra crime okay so let's move to this n but before we move to n let's move to p they are related p will help you understand n okay so let's write p it's called paracrine paracrine signaling okay so that one is represented by this one here so what happens is that paracrine signaling the cells are closed Okay? they are not touching each other but they are close there's a space between them so the ligand comes out from this signaling cell to the target cell it en it enters the interstitial fluid space okay and then it diffuses and reaches the target cell so that's what paracrine is talking about paracrine is something close signaling cell and target cell they're close okay unlike this one there's no diffusion at all it just direct transfer then let's now talk about neurocrine 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 signaling neurocrine signaling is the same as paracrine the only difference is that this one happens in nerves it's a special one that has to do specially with nerves nerves they secrete what we call neurotransmitters neurotransmitters okay it will go diffuse enter this space and then binds to the other cell which is also a nerve cell okay the inducer cell is a nerve cell the target cell is a nerve cell okay it, it like and then it's known as a neurotransmitter as neurocrine was the same but it will enter this interstitial fluid so it's similar to paracrine all right then let's talk about this last one the e 
That E stands for number five, endocrine. Endocrine signaling. The endocrine signaling is also known as signaling at a distance. That is this one here. Distance. This distance here, you see why there's an arrow? The, there's a lot, far distance between the signaling cell and the target cell. They are not close at all. So this thing here is signifying the bloodstream. So because of the distance, they are far. The, the diffusion cannot take it to where it needs to be. So it needs to enter into the blood. When the signaling cell or in Jesus cell releases the ligand, it enters the bloodstream and the blood now, now transported far away to where it is needed. So that's what's called endocrine. And ligands that use endocrine they're also known as hormones okay this one called hormones that's the aspect of endocrinology endocrine physiology we learn about the different kinds of hormones in the body that most of them they use the bloodstream to go to a distant part of the body and sometimes it can even affect the whole body to cause and elicit a physiological response all right so between the target cell I mean the signaling cell and the physiological response there's what we call transduction transduction okay it's about interpreting the message and converting it into a response there's a process there you can find all that in the book okay check the link below you see um, a book they have written on general physiology all those details you get them there all right so the, but this is just the basic thing you need to know about types of cell signaling cell signaling and communication all right so i'll see you in the next lecture